when you make radio circuits that go above 10 MHz, uh, specific problems can occur. You see my breadboard. I'm still working on a sine wave oscillator uh, from 10 MHz. And I want to change that sine wave into a square wave. Here is the circuit from the sine wave oscillator. And in this video I want to tell something more about all the effects that you can encounter when you want to make such an oscillator. At first I want to say that such a setup with such a big breadboard causes uh, specific problems. I had for instance the problem that when I connected the voltage here the minus here to the earth wiring, the oscillator oscillated, but when I connected the voltage here, it didn't work any longer, and I, ha I had to change the parameters from the oscillator. So I had to turn this potentiometer or that potentiometer, and that's why I made here a note earth wire. 10 MHz is a quite critical frequency. All frequencies above that are also critical. So the length of the earth wire plays a role. Could be when it is too long, the oscillator must be adapted to an other working point. And the working point can be set here and here. Here the amplification, here the working point, but they are combined. That's the reason why I always on my YouTube videos publish these circuits with potentiometers. On the internet you can find many oscillator circuits. Uh, I'm not sure whether they work because the working point um, is often not adjustable. The pin connections from the transistor. Here we see the sine wave that's now generated on 18 volts approximately and the frequency is 11.997 uh, MHz. The crystal reads 12.00 MHz. Okay, could be anyway. Um, I want to demonstrate at first the hand testing from oscillators. When you move with your hand between the sensitive base and the ground, there is an effect. Your hand is a resistor, also a capacitor. So what happens when I use my hands here between the base and the minus? Let's see what happens. The oscillation stops. And I can try to set the oscillation again. Now it starts again, okay, here, this is my hand between the base and the minus, it stopped. But you can start the oscillation again by changing the working point. And you see here also that the oscillation gets back on a certain moment when the transistor gets into its proper working point. Again, it stops. I hope it gets back. Yes, it gets back. Sine wave oscillator is always very critical in terms of amplification, feedback, etc. So also on high frequencies like this, also on low frequencies, the sine wave conditions, the conditions to produce a sine wave are very critical. So let's see what happens when we move the minus here to another part. Disconnect now the, um, the oscillator, sorry, the clock, sorry, the uh, frequency meter. Here we have quite a big signal and it is, it has some distortion. So we can change the working point with this potentiometer and that one. I want to do that now. 
Now the emitter resistor is changed and we have a better sine wave. Now the collector is sorry the base resistor is changed and we also see very substantial effects. So again that's why I publish my circuits with potentiometers. A good sine wave oscillator, by the way, on 12 MHz. I'm sure it's usable on lower frequencies or higher frequencies. I didn't test that. But anyway, when you have a distorted sine wave, connect a small capacitor from 33 picofarad or somewhat higher between the base and the minus. And of course set the working point properly to get a good sine wave out. I'm working further here with the sine wave oscillator. Try to make it a square wave with the help of this transistor. But it is a very tough job. I didn't succeed up until now. But the sine wave itself, sine wave oscillator itself, is, I think, quite interesting. And it works properly.